It's 8.50 exactly. Nelson Mandela was one of the greatest statesmen of our time, but not many people know he had another talent which only surfaced in his later years as an artist. Yes, he returned to Robben Island where he'd been imprisoned by South Africa's apartheid-era regime. And there he sketched a series of pictures, including one which depicts his, the window of his cell. Well, his eldest daughter, Mackie, is here now to tell us all about that. Very good morning to you. Lovely to see you. Good morning. Um, just tell, it, when he, tell us a little bit about when and why he started sketching and painting. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's something really that's not something that he woke up and thought I should sketch. It was something that was introduced to him. And uh, he, he was taught how to trace. The issue of using colour is something that I think was uh, he grew up in. You know, Africans are very colourful by, by nature. Africa is a very warm, very... The sunshine is different in Africa and it's uh, different colours. But South Africa itself uh, is a kaleidoscope of colours. And so um, I think when the idea of, of, of painting was and doing sketches was introduced to him, he found another form in which to tell the story of South Africa, the story of the struggle and how, you know, I mean, literally they overcame adversity and brought uh, freedom, you know, to South Africa. And that, uh, um, and believed very much in the future because he was such a positive man. Yes. Um, Maggie, the, the image we just saw a moment ago, uh, which is uh, uh, clearly people can see that, the, uh, the window with the bars. Mm -hmm. Tell us a little bit about that picture. That picture is really depicts uh, the window in this prison cell. And uh, it's, uh, you know, there's a house that's out there and I think it's representing the future. Um, and I think the, the fact that even if, though he was in prison, he, the only way he could survive prison is to free himself spiritually. Um, uh, and so, although physically he was incarcerated, mm -hmm. but spiritually he was a free man because he could engage with the prisoners and I think with the warders. And so, in his 27 years of being imprisoned, uh, there was a meeting of minds and he saw that this and they discovered that this man was not the evil man that they thought he was. Because my father emphasizes very well that none of us is born hating another. You know, and if we are, not, if we are born not hating each other, we're taught to hate. And if we're taught to hate, we can, taught, we can be taught to love each other. And he did believe that very, very much. Mm. And so that painting is a reflection of his hope of being out of prison physically, but emotionally he was already out of prison. Difficult times for you because you were very young when he went into prison and there were year, many years when, of course, you could not see him. Yes. How yes. did that affect your relationship with him? Um, I think that I was very awkward with his own children. Mm. He was much more freer with the grandchildren. He couldn't relate to us, you know, he still saw us in the eyes of when he left, I was between six and seven. So he usually sees us in those eyes. Uh, it was difficult to relate to, you know, young, uh, mature women who were married, mm -hmm. had their own families and old children. And uh, that I grew up in a period where you were not taught things, you learned by emulation from elders around you. And uh, he wanted the same, and he demanded a lot out of his children. But he, he was very awkward in relationships mm. uh, because of the isolation for so many years. Um, but with his grandchildren, he was much more freer, I think. It is, it's the side of him, you know, the, the, the relationship you describe with you, between you and him, is one, of course, we don't know about. The, the, the public, of course, sees a very different image. But it was something that the time of his death, uh, you, you were able to, to, to put things in some kind of order. It uh, uh, must, well, must have been a very, very difficult time for you. Yeah, I think the last three years of my dad was... Uh, I had to make peace with myself. I had to free myself from my, from my own prison of being angry and bitter that I, I had a father who was there, but uh, not there. Um, and... Uh, 
you know, I had read Jane Fonda's uh, book, biography, in which she, Jane Fonda also had a very difficult relationship with her father. But at some point, um, she asked Audrey Hepburn, why is the father not showing so much affection to her, but uh, to the boyfriend's son? And uh, Audrey says to her, you know, it is the children who have to make the effort to patch the relationship. And that was, to me, it said something to me that I really had to free myself and make an effort. Uh, because Dada had dedicated himself to politics, to make sure that South Africa was free. And uh, perhaps, uh, and I've come to the conclusion that when we come into this life, we're not given everything. There are certain things that you are given which are strong and some things you have to learn in the journey of life. Mm. And it was the same great as my dad uh, has been. Um, he was human. He had feet of clay. He was not perfect in everything. Oh. And so I had come to live with those imperfections, you know. Um, but he was determined. He was singularly minded that if he set himself, this is where I want to go, it didn't matter what obstacles were on the way. You know, he went there. And uh, it's that courage and that fearlessness that even now, I take away that sustains me. Oh. Well, it's lovely hearing from you, Mackie. Thank you very much for Thanks sharing so those thoughts with us. And uh, Mackie will be at the Blended Palace Festival of Literature, Film and Music tomorrow.